Street Fighter was a video game. Yeah. But did you know also, Phelan, that there was a movie? Oh, I've never heard about this. How'd that go? <laughs> Everyone loved it. It was critically acclaimed. All right. Well, <laughs> that's all we need from us. See <laughs> So, Street Fighter the movie is um, a Raul Julia showcase. <laughs> it really is, though. You come here prepared to fight a madman, and instead you found a god? I know yeah. this is like a lot of people point this out, but it's really true. Like, he didn't have to go that hard in this movie, and he really did. Like, yeah. he was great in this movie, and like, it was like... A genuinely good performance, and then mm. just way over the top when it needed to be. Yeah, yeah, he brings different levels, because he brings, like, the serious dictator lines, like with the Tuesday line everyone loves. You don't remember? For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. But then he's just like hamming it up so hard and the battle with Guile near the end. For I beheld Satan and he fell from heaven! I think what was great too is this great contrast between not only the characters on screen but behind the scenes as well between him and Jean-Claude Van Damme. You'll have to do better than that, okay? Because you have Raul Julia doing this like Shakespearean performance, way over the top. He gets blown up, and then you get this flat ass line. <laughs> like, yeah. No, you're Looks off like you're air. off the air, Bison. <laughs> it was the worst. Bison, you're off the air. But the people from Street Fighter will become alive. You're off the air. It's worse when you hear about behind the scenes, like Raul Julia was dealing with a lot of stuff, you know, he had a lot of personal health problems, so like, he was like, constantly like, on the ball and like, learning his lines and like, um, getting into character and steadying dictators to figure out, you know, what this is all about. Meanwhile, Jean-Claude Van Damme is blowing 10 grand on coke every day. Yeah, coming <laughs> in late. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you either come late or not at all, like, put filming back days constantly. Yeah. So they ripped pages out of the script to speed things. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't think that was just Jean Claude. That wasn't Damme, just him, but, but I mean, he I didn't sound like he helped. <laughs> no, he didn't help an already like bad situation. And then I'll make them pay. I feel like compared to like Mortal Kombat, which is often compared to it, they they make it work and make you believe in its world. There yeah. are some ridiculous things to it, but it is played seriously. And they it's do a really lot of fun. good character work in the original Mortal Kombat movie, which is what elevates it, I think, quite a bit. I would say that is the best video game adaptation ever done. Like genuinely a very good movie, and it's very purposeful in how it's made. You can tell like the sets and um, the choreography and everything. Thing, like comes together really beautifully. Street Fighter sort of succeeds despite itself. Like yeah. it's not really like a, a greatly crafted movie. No, but it's like, super entertaining. You came from across the world to fight me, soldier. Now is your chance. <laughs> Pathetic. A lot of the casting could work fine. I mean, it does in the context of the movie they made. But, like, <laughs> if they made a better movie, I could see some of these elements slotting in better. Not Jean-Claude Van Damme, but no. some of them. <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme is the one thing that would not work even if it was a, a good no. movie. No. Um, you could cast him as another role, because he is a great martial artist, but I don't believe yeah. him as Mr. America. No. And it's and not just the fact that, like, he's American, because you could be American and have an accent, or you yeah. could become it's a like citizen. He's got the whatever. U.S. Yeah. flag. He's got the tattoo, U.S. Like... flag, he's constantly talking about America and recruitment. This is a, a very quintessentially yeah. America and that's kind of like, character. That's what Guile is. He is kind of like a yeah. Mr. America guy in yeah. Street Fighter anyway, so it's... And, it's weird to cast Jean-Claude Van Damme as that. No. Still, instead we got like the Belgian Grand Slam over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, America, I'm just from a, a boy from America. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. 
That's great. We can all go home. Or you can come with me and kill Bison. Bison is getting paid off for his crimes, but we can all go home. I'm not going home. And I'm going to kick that son of a bitch Bison's ass so hard. Now, who wants to go home and who wants to go with me? No. <laughs> I love that. I think my favorite from him was like, your ass is six months overdue, and it is mine. Yeah, it is mine. <laughs> <laughs> like the guy yeah. reacting to it, like, what? Your ass is six months overdue, and it's mine. Kyle? Great job. That's Save during it. their great air raid, I mean, sea raid, because they weren't allowed to do an air raid on Bison's place. Yeah, Which yeah. he does in the Thunder in Paradise boat. Yeah, it <laughs> looked exactly like the Thunder in Paradise boat. And I think Hulk Hogan, honestly, would be a better guy all of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest. What are you doing? A little psychological warfare. Great job. Good it's not often work. I say Hulk Hogan could improve this performance, <laughs> but he really could. That would have been amazing. Hogan <laughs> is guile. Yes. An eye. For an eye. I guess you didn't see that, did you? You like that other movie, like where he had the hair? Yeah, Assault on Devil's Mountain or right. something like that. Like when he looked like a normal human being. Yeah, you can kind of make it work. Or his like a secret agent club hair. You know, yeah. The kind of buzz cut <laughs> going on. He could be a guy. Mm -hmm. This movie had like a, a, a shit ton going on behind the scenes like because uh, in Thailand they wouldn't let them do uh, the air raid stuff because they, they couldn't get approval for all the planes. There was some threat of a military coup so they <laughs> all the roads were closed by the military so they had to bring in their actors on speedboats mm -hmm. and uh, add on top of that all the, the problems with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Just all sorts of things that they had to work with so it's kind of amazing they had a movie that is a movie. In yeah, the end. it's entertaining enough. It's kind of like the Mario movie in that respect. It's not a great adaptation of the source <laughs> material, but it's something I can always come back to and watch once in a while and get amusement out of. Quick, change the channel. Well, this had Balrog, uh, <laughs> with the guy who was in that police squad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like something we like to quote once in a while. It was funny. It's like, forget it. Nobody says forget it to me. <laughs> Buddy Bridge could break every bone in your body. Yeah, well, he must be a pretty good box. I forget it. Forget it. Nobody says forget it to me. <laughs> it's funny because he was a boxer in that, and I didn't even realize it was him. I recognized him. I think. Isn't Die Hard? Oh, <laughs> and I was yeah. like, oh, that's the boxer guy from <laughs> Police Squad. <laughs> I wouldn't remember that except for you just going, yeah. nobody says forget it to me. <laughs> I just always thought that was a really funny line in that show. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. I'm going to break your face. Roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet. I'm going to break your face. <laughs> Jack and Jill went up to hill. I'm going to break your face. <laughs> And you pointed out too, in the end, when he dresses up for no reason, they all, they're like, it's the end, we gotta be in our costumes, he's in his, like, boxer outfit, and you're like, yeah, let me cushion my blows with my boxing gloves! Yeah, nonsense. It's like, the bad guys, like, dress half of the cast up in their proper outfits from yeah. the game. It's like, yeah. Ken and Ryu, Chun-Li. <laughs> I always forget T-Hawk's in this movie. He's just there, like, I swear he just shows up at the end. Maybe he was dressed up in the military garb until the end where he's dressed more like a Native American, but it's like, oh, hey, T-Hawk, yeah, thanks for your help. I was here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, I didn't play Street Fighter very much. Like, I think my brothers might have had one of the games, but that one I'm less familiar with than Mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. But even I know, like, it's kind of a disappointment with some of the characters. And, like, I don't know what happened with Blanca. I just oh. don't know. <laughs> You're pointing out he's kind of like a mix of Lou Ferrigno, Hulk, and <laughs> Carrot Top. Current Carrot Top. Yeah. He won't Buff be able to see it. He comes out. <laughs> He's got, like, the fun fur type hair, too. Like, I feel like the rest of him you could kind of make work. It's still mm -hmm. very, like, 70s Incredible Hulk, but, like, Yeah, I feel the like you definitely, bad. you need more prosthetics to make him into more of a monstery form for it to work as a good Blanca. They could have just had Lou Ferrigno and just done that, <laughs> yeah, honestly. honestly. It, it looks so much like <laughs> Well, he barely spoke, and the, the fact they had um, an actor cast, like, and then a stunt actor, uncredited, playing him for most of it. It's like, why did you 
bother with that. Just get a stunt actor. He doesn't say anything. Yeah. Like, he mumbles some stuff. It's a weird way they realize Blanc in this, because they make him an old friend of Guile's, who's, like, at the beginning of the movie, already captured by Bison, and Bison's like, oh, yeah, friend of Guile's, well, turn him into a monster! And, like, we don't really get anything out of him before this happens, so it's kind of like, why bother with this storyline for Blanca? <laughs> There's such a big build-up with this. Mm -hmm. This this whole Blanca thing, and then the big reveal, it's like the, the fart secondary... To the the part to the finish, yeah. <laughs> Is that worried he's gonna take over with stupid Wiener Blanca? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Nah. <laughs> They're never gonna approve your bison dollars with this as your plan. No, after I kidnap the queen. After I kidnap the queen, <laughs> one the bison <laughs> dollar would be worth five British pounds. This money isn't worth the paper it's printed on. Every bison dollar will be worth five British pounds once I've kidnapped their queen. <laughs> Then Saget, or was Saget? What is his name? Sagat. Sagat. Saget. Bob Saget. Bob Saget so comes tells, in. <laughs> he tells Bob Saget that's what he's going to pay him with, and that's what it's going to be worth. He's good for it. He's like, I guess. Yeah. What else do I got? It's one of the parts that is genuinely funny in the movie when he pays Sagat, and he's like, what? <laughs> is this a joke? I must have been insane to think I could do business with you, Bison! It's weird, because there's parts of the movie that are really genuinely funny, like, like that. I always love the Zangief line where they see the truck full of explosives coming at them <laughs> on the monitor and he goes, Quick, change the channel! <laughs> Quick, change the channel! His character was great. I love he has a face turn in like the 11th hour, mm -hmm. right at the end, just because he genuinely didn't know he was working for the bad yeah. guy. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's the bad guy, never mind. The enemies of peace and freedom are at our walls. Our boss is the enemy of freedom and peace. These people have come from all over the world to stop him. General Bison, he's a bad guy. Are we the baddies? He paid me a freaking fortune. You got paid? You were you were paid? Yeah. <laughs> and he holds the door open for two seconds and then he doesn't get arrested in the end. He's yeah. Like, I didn't commit any crimes. I'm fine. Yeah, I was good at the very end. I was so good. you know, redeemed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his his buddies must have been pissed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> DJ is great too, which is weird. It's like they swapped DJ and Balrog for good and bad for seemingly no reason. But he was really good. Yeah, he's really funny in the background of Bison in a few scenes. There's a part where they think Guile's been shot by Ken, and he's like, "Ah, oh, that's great, right, Bison?" He's like, On the contrary, I won. <laughs> Okay. That's great news, General. Congratulations. On the contrary, I mourn. Okay. Yeah, he was a good comic foil to him, but he was, like, just cool enough that it didn't feel like a buffoon. Like, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess he could be, like, a secondhand man to him. Mm -hmm. His his uh, hair kind of reminded me of uh, the cat on Red Dwarf. Oh, yeah. He's kind of like that. Maybe the mix of him and the main guy. He's got the little braids. Yeah. <laughs> it's about as much as I know about Red Dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about uh, Kylie Minogue? I like her in this movie. It's like, Cammy doesn't get to do a whole lot, but, I mean, it's not like you look at that and you're like, oh, she did a bad job or anything. Yeah, well, she was still, like, she'd been acting, but it was not anything uh, very big and not, like, for North American audiences. Sure. This was her first, like, big film. Like, she was known as a singer, but this was, like, a real test of her acting chops. What are you doing here? That was going to be my question. I think, like, outside of the, the accent, it was not great. The gap didn't get to the top of the Asian underworld by taking risks. I think, like, she did a really good job, and you wouldn't know that she was, like, yeah, that's she hadn't been in a big feature film before. Then Cammy, I guess, maybe was born in Australia, moved over to the UK at some Everyone point. Everyone has some weird backstory. You got the Hawaiian sumo wrestler, yeah. and, like, it's like, okay. But, I guess it's, it's not impossible, but it is a weird choice. Yeah, it's strange. But he was still fun. Fun. I liked him. Like, I liked that they had a huge cast of people that weren't necessarily well known, but they all made like like really good use of their time. Like they'd have one or two lines and it would be like, this is a great delivery. How you doing? Hey, looking great. Nice gun. Hey, all those great like... uniform. It's not Shakespeare except yeah. if you're Royal Julia, but it's, you know, it made they knew it was a video least, game movie. Yeah, a lot of them stayed memorable, I guess, because they would have a couple good lines in there. Pigtails. Look who's talking. 
Oh. And yeah, Kylie Minogue is much better than John Clan Van Damme, so it's just like, maybe Cammy should have just been in charge. We could have gotten rid of Kyle. No! <laughs> Son, we're pushing back the enemy, but the skirmish is on every level. Still no sign of bison. Everyone's carrying Jean Claude Van Damme through this film. Great job. And yeah. he is a good martial artist, and I do, I laugh at like the contrast of like his terrible lines versus everyone else. Like, Raul Julia is like acting circles around him. Mm -hmm. Are you men enough to fight with me? Anyone who opposes me will be destroyed. Keep your own god. In fact, this might be a good time to pray to him. Bison, you're off the air. <laughs> and this is the hero of the film. No. No. And it's weird too because Guile is not like the main character of Street Fighter. It's not the, the, the no, story. No, it should be like Ryu, and they kind of turned Ken and Ryu into these schemey guys who have a face turn. They're kind of dicking around other bad guys because they're trying to sell Sagat like these fake weapons, just get away with some money and stuff. My men have already unloaded the truck and brought the weapons here. Ow! But then it's like, I don't know, <laughs> supposedly Guile gives them a speech about what's going on, which makes them really think about what they're doing. Like, yeah, actually, we want to help. But, I mean, you can't believe anything comes out of Guile's mouth. <laughs> now, are you the same as Sagat and Bison? Or am I right? And you're different. No. They got big Bimmy and Jimmy vibes. Mm -hmm. I do wonder if the Double Dragon movie influenced this a little bit, or if they were influenced by it. I don't know which one came first, but it feels <laughs> similar in that, like, a weird video game adaptation. Like, we like this this interplay here. Mm -hmm. Make them kind of uh, rapscallions, yeah. ragamuffins. <laughs> it is a weird take on them, but I mean, it's still kind of fun in the movie anyway. Yeah, like it doesn't feel like they're boring or misused because they yeah. have a place in the story. And you get why they would make them that because they go undercover at some point and that helps them have a way in that they were, they sort of had this prior relationship with Sagat. I do like Ken has some Lyndon Ashby, Johnny Cage vibes. He does, yeah. Apparently John Claude Van Damme could have been Johnny Cage at one point in the that would movie. Be terrible. Because he can't it's do like, one-liners. You hear him in this, and it's like, yeah. Tyson, you're off the air. Great job. And then originally, in the original Mortal Kombat game, originally, originally, <laughs> it was just supposed to be Jean Claude Van Damme in there instead of Johnny Cage, and that would have aged very poorly. <laughs> You know the character I think they utilized the best was that, uh, the Indian guy? Dalsim. Dalsim? So good! Yeah, that was a wonderful character arc with him. <laughs> He's a scientist who's captured by Bison and is forced to make Blanca into Blanca. And it's just like, he gave up at some point. <laughs> He's just like, I give up on trying to understand what I'm doing here. It's like, apparently I ripped my hair out at some point in frustration. Yeah, and they cut that scene. So yeah. it made no sense that like this character just like shows up and he's bald in a diaper and he's like, hey, I gotta redeem myself or something. Anyway, here's some help. I'm gonna take off with my little green goon. Blanca doesn't even do anything after he's a monster. No, really. it's just he kind doesn't. Of like, they just oh. go like, hey, don't be a monster. He's like, Urgh. Bison <laughs> wants to sick him on the hostages he has because they're not paying up and he yeah. doesn't come and that's about it. He's like, you don't deserve a firing squad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do not deserve the martial dignity of a firing squad. You shall be killed by a wild beast. Can you imagine how long that would have taken with that Blanca? That doesn't look like you'd be there for hours. You're like, I thought this was going to be good, but this is just incredibly just, boring. <laughs> people just be killing themselves. Like, I'm tired of waiting for this guy to tear me apart. Yeah. Come on, just give me a gun or something. <laughs> I'll pay you a million bison dollars for this to just end right now. <laughs> I think the fact that, like, they didn't have a lot of time for uh, choreography and they had to reshoot a bunch of stuff, like, the fight scenes still turned out pretty good. They, obviously, they had to work around Raul Julia, like, he couldn't do as much of the physical stuff. He didn't. was doing a lot, though, considering where he was at at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. He uh, was doing a lot of wire work, a lot of physical things. Established <laughs> right at the beginning, I guess, that he's overpowering regular people because they have him 
fight a couple of guys they capture and he snaps their necks in two seconds, which yeah. is very funny. <laughs> Pathetic. Your turn now. Perfect! It's just like Darth Vader, you know, just reach out and like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't until he started getting, like, fighting with the lasers, it started getting really ridiculous. Yeah, he's it. got the Emperor Lightning yeah. and stuff. <laughs> that was so damn good. <laughs> he's just going crazy at that point with all his deliveries, talking about being a god. Yeah. <laughs> you got, like, super crazy energy, and then you got, like, coked out Jean Claude Van Damme over there. How did John claude Van Damme do ten thousand dollars worth of blow and get less energy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see if it was Hogan, we know he gets crazy. <laughs> we should have had more Hulk Hogan in this movie. <laughs> Complex carbs, brother. Complex carbs. It came like rocket fuel. What about that guy they wanted to play? Uh, uh, Ryu in this? I guess he played Ryu in some uh, Japanese commercials and stuff. They want him for Ryu and basically uh, the production did not. <laughs> so like, all right, he can be this uh, extra character, Sawada, which is just the actual actor's last name. <laughs> yeah, well, he uh, he couldn't speak English very well was part of it. And mm -hmm. so they dubbed him for everything except when he was speaking Japanese. And like... Whoever they got to dub him was really bad. Uh, Colonel, my commando team is at full readiness. The line deliveries were so bad, and it sounded like Kermit the Frog to me. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, ooh. It's much like some were... people say I sound. <laughs> you do not sound like that. <laughs> no. I'm really important. I'm in Street Fighter the movie, the game. <laughs> <laughs> I was in two episodes of the animated series. <laughs> I think whoever decided not to make him a main character made a good call, because that would have been terrible. Mm -hmm. I guess he was still not happy, though, on set. But he got oh, yeah. demoted to this character and was stinky to uh, the guy who played Ryu. That Something guy. man? By Byron man? <laughs> man. <laughs> he was mean he to man. He was plagued by man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be mean to man, man. <laughs> the light too is like Raul Julia ended up taking this role because his kids wanted him to do it, and it's the same with the guy who played Ken. Yeah, both, yeah, both of kids. them are like, uh, well, I don't know about this. Well, my kids like this Street Fighter game, so I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, and the guy who played Ken was also like, oh, I get to act with Raul Julia, so okay. <laughs> yeah, it's the same with Mario. All the kids, yeah. they hold the power. Yeah, they get these actors into these silly video game roles. I wonder too, like when those kids like grew up, like what they thought about that. Like my yeah. dad did this role because of me. Like, yeah. I bet what they, have I done? Hopefully they still like the video games. They're not like, oh, cringe. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> epic fail dad. <laughs> That'd be pretty awesome, though. Can you imagine? You're like, oh yeah, my dad was in Street Fighter, the movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Chen Li was fine, too. Kind of weird to make her into a, a reporter, but it's like, all right. I feel like she got sidelined a lot, but I feel like it, it was really difficult to highlight anyone outside With, of like a few people because there's just so many characters. Yeah, they, they inserted too many. It was a bit of that annihilation overfilling the cast there. Not to the degree of annihilation, I don't think. But yeah, it didn't feel as annoying as Annihilation. No. It didn't like it didn't feel disrespectful to the characters. Yeah. I think there were some odd choices, but it didn't feel like it was made by people that like didn't understand it or didn't like it. And I mm. feel like Annihilation had a little bit of that. <laughs> the bad guy organization's called Shadaloo, so mm. I kept thinking like Shadaloo yeah. couldn't escape if I wanted to. <laughs> whoa, 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 Shadaloo. Shadaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some people who are more into Street Fighter are like, don't make fun of that, but it's a stupid name. Kylie Minogue sees like a tattoo or something and she's like, Shadaloo, Mark. <laughs> I'm like, it's stupid. Shadaloo Tom. Well, this is a fun movie. It's much better than Chun-Li. Yep. I guess I almost enjoy some parts of it because it's so stupid, like Neil McDonough and Bison. I ripped my child out of my wife's body and stuff. Like, what yeah. the? Why? <laughs> Why any of this? Would it have been improved if Jean-Claude Van Damme had reprised his role as Guile? No. 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 Bison, I always knew you were Irish. <laughs> I liked the uh, the big speech Jean Claude Van Damme gives to everyone about freedom. Yeah, how they, well, we can go home. 
<laughs> oh, kick their ass! <laughs> you know what? I felt in that scene, he was given 110%. Maybe that was one of the scenes that took hours and hours and hours to film. Get but the I good feel performance like, out yeah, of him. I feel like if there's like one scene, like, yeah, he really put a lot into that. I think it was that scene. Mm -hmm. But we can all go home. Oh. The bat partner. Then in the boat after that, though, it almost looks like he's pulling out a flask. <laughs> yeah, it did huh? look like it. What was it? A key? It's some weird kind of cassette he puts oh, in to watch. Because right. he watches yeah. some video of him and Blanca to remind us that he knew him before. He's was like, that what oh, it was? he's the Hulk now. I always forget everything about Blanca until I see this again. Mm, like, it's a lot to easily forget in this. Yeah. You always forget that the scientist guy's even Dalson. Yeah. Like, oh, uh. Yeah, and then you look at him. DB and you're like, who's who? Oh, all right, I guess that's who he is. <laughs> Chun Li, she had the biggest vendetta with Bison. She really should have been the one to fight him in the end, not stupid Guile. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like Guile's really trying to insert himself here. I am Bison's number one enemy. And Bison's kind of all over the place how much he cares about Guile because when they think Hen shot him, he's like, oh, I wanted to fight Guile one on one in honorable combat. And then when Guile's coming to Bison's <laughs> yeah. in his boat, <laughs> He pulls out the arcade sticks and is trying to blow him up before yeah. he gets there. The arcade sticks was very good. Yeah. Whoever decided on that was a genius. <laughs> but then when Guile gets there, he's like, Oh yes, now we'll have honorable combat. That's what I always want. <laughs> He's such an honorable guy. I love when he goes in his little chamber to gas uh, yes. Chen and her friends. And he's just like, Woo. Yeah. <laughs> great. The skull fades into him like, yes. Bison deserved to win and maybe he did because at the very end he pulls like a shredder, sticks his hand out of the ground and it says like computers were, like rebooting. It's like, make a selection, world domination. <laughs> the gall of this movie. Raul via con Dios, psh, you're back from the dead. Yeah. Why would you do that though? Yeah. Why would you do that? They knew. That was for the home video. What that wasn't it? in the theater. Yeah, yeah. That's weird. But maybe they were going to have another guy. I don't know. I it don't never know. happened. Yeah, it's <laughs> a strange addition. <laughs> but it is strange to do that. It is. <laughs> like, I get like the sequel bait, but like, I don't, I'm not sure that was the direction to go. Mm. He probably would have laughed about it. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed like he had a good sense of humor. I didn't know him personally, but he might have thought it was funny. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I would think it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, did it uh, hold up to Street Fighter, the movie, the game? The movie, the game, where it's <laughs> trying to be sort of Mortal Kombat meets Street Fighter. <laughs> Oh, one thing I did like when uh, Ken fake shoots Guile and he's in slow motion. <laughs> you lose. There was there was a bit too with Guile when Chun Li discovers him pretending to be dead in the morgue. Oh no, that was oh, funny. I did yeah. like that because like. He pops off the slab and he shows the squib pad, oh, yeah, yeah. but his clothes are like perfectly clean all around it. There was some part where like he jumps out at Bison. He comes out doing a kick, but it's like completely like this. Oh forever. yeah, yeah. He becomes like Xena jumping toward the boat. Yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 <laughs> After the bison headquarters explodes and stuff, everyone's just like, let's pose! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Poor Kylie Minogue. She had the worst one to try and pretend was like a thing you would be doing at that time. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is kind of like, you know, yeah, or, yeah. And then she's like, Psh. yeah, I can't use that <laughs> like, weird turn butt, around pose. butt Yeah. Yes. Now he's possibly everything I'm not. We did it. We reviewed it. Chocolate pizza, I even like it cause I want
Failers to Failers Bring a mortal comedy Failers to Failers An animation movie Failers to Failers What we really is so fun Failers to Failers What you all feared about You know, it should have happened when they posed. It's like, um, police squad. Like, they're all posed and then... Yeah. <laughs> Bird flies by. <laughs> <laughs> Be great. Someone's pouring coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna break your face. <laughs> Quick, change the channel!